Remember the 5th of November. Gunpowder, treason, and plot. For I see no reason why gunpowder, treason, should ever be forgot. He's out of here. Fun's only just started, Mr. Van der Heiden. It's your friend, right? Talk to her. Make her see reason. Your definition of reason being? Remember, remember the 5th of November. Gunpowder, treason and plot. We see no reason for gunpowder, treason to ever be forgot. You should have worn a coat. Black jacket, more like. You stay here. It's all right, Gracie. It's just having a bit of fun. Bloody time, Doc. Bill Hobart. How lovely to have you back with us. Doc, she's over here. Don't keep him yakking, Davis. We'll be here all night. I take it that's our... Killer. Yeah. Oh, just a boy. 16, Winston Cummings. Part of the orphanage. Dear 
your idea. I've told you all I know. Now I need to get the children home. Can I help you take the children back to the orphanage? I can manage. Come on, Mary, we're leaving. Mary! Gracie, come with me. Damn fool of a girl. Should never have taken those children out. Emma Keneally, 22 years old. Straight up shooting. Would appear so, Charlie. I trust you have the weapon there. Ah. Luger P08. Highly sought after souvenir for returning soldiers, the Luger. Where would he get his hands on something like this? Boy's probably a little too young for active service, eh? Mm. Uh, I found some spent shells over there. Here. This. This is where he fired the gun. Oh, look, Charlie. Perfect cover. Do you have your torch handy? Yeah. Ah, yes. Now, I don't think our shooter was standing. I think he was kneeling. A right-hander, if shooting from a kneeling position, would typically put his right knee on the ground and step his left foot forward. You see? Now, looking at the impressions in the ground here, I would say... The opposite applies. I think our shooter favoured his left. Right. Well, we found a third shell over here. Well, there was a third shot. Yeah. Right there. Did anyone actually see him fire the weapon? No. Well, forgive me, Charlie, but look. Imagine this, if you will. Here I am, under the cover of darkness. I kneel, shoot, fell my target. Why on earth do I then move forward into the light and what? Take another shot? Maybe you try to dispose of your gun in the bonfire. Well. Lucien, when you're finished here, I wouldn't mind a lift home. Yes, Matty, of course, of course. Oh, hurt. Oh, you hurt. No, it's nothing, it's just a, a burn. That's not nothing. I'll sort you out. One minute there were people singing and dancing and... and then suddenly there was a... a boom. And where was Emma when this occurred? I lost sight of her. She'd gone off to talk with Winston. And, and the next time I saw her, she... Yes. I'm just glad you're all right. I still don't understand why Winston shot Emma. He, he looked up to her. She, if anything, I think he had a crush on her. Really? Was she aware of this crush? She played on it. Well, well. Quick or the dead round here. I was obliged to start without you. Your new boss, the superintendent, has been badgering me for my report. Munro called you. Three times in the past hour. Catch me up. Two gunshot wounds to the upper left thorax. Entrance wounds through the second and third intercostal space. No surrounding stippling or soot deposition. You've lost an earring, torn low. Quite recently too, by the looks and blood under a broken fingernail. No exit wounds. Both bullets have been accounted for. Alice, two wounds very close together. Two bullets lodged very near the spine. Someone was a very steady shot. Bloody hell. Out of practice, Major Blake. What on earth are you doing? Conducting a little experiment. That was dinner. Right. 
I thought it passed its prime. Well, it is now. <sighs> ah, Charlie. Do you know if Winston had any access to guns, or arms training, cadets perhaps? Well, he's not answering any questions at the moment, but I doubt it. Why? Well, Doc, he's black. Plenty of Aboriginal soldiers served, Charlie. What's your point? Look, I made the distance he supposedly fired that gun at uh, to be around 25 yards. Now, I'll grant you, uh, conducting a test without the actual murder weapon is flawed science, but I, forgive me, I'm waffling. Look, I consider myself an accomplished shot, Charlie. I've had training, experience. I had a devil of a time hitting anything at that range, whereas our killer managed to fire off two shots in quick succession, both shots bang on target. Impressive. Impressive. A damn near bloody professional. Oi! Get off my desk. Your desk? Blake, what are you doing here? Yeah, a copy of the autopsy report on Emma Keneally. I asked the forensic registrar to deliver it directly to me. Oh, more than happy to do it in person. Yeah, good to toss ideas around face to face, you know, more collegiate. I am capable of reading a report. Yes, yes, of course, as you wish. Yeah, I would like to see young Winston, however, if I may. I ask you why. Well, he may be carrying injuries, and it's my job to ensure he remains in good health whilst in police custody. Charlie, you fancy doing the honours? Sergeant Hobart, let's call Dr. Blake to the cells. Winston. Go away. Doesn't like the look at you, Doc. Winston, I'm a doctor. My name's Lucian Blake. I'd like to take a look at you, if that's all right. No, please. No. No, I'm not. It took quite a knock, I'm told. I'm all right. Yes, well, how about we take a quick look anyway, eh? Now, a couple of deep breaths for me, in and out. Good, and one more. I don't think anything's broken, that's a good sign. Just bruised, I think. What time is it? Well, it's... It's 9 a.m. 12 more hours. And they have to charge me or let me go. You cheeky bastard. You fancy yourself as a lawyer, do you? Why not, eh? Yeah, you'll see the inside of a courtroom soon enough, son. I'll be the last black fella to hang for Do you know one day you're not going to be able to do whatever you want to us? One day you're all going to pay. Yeah, well, till that day comes, why don't you shut your bull mouth, Bill? We just got a call as a witness to the shooting. I saw him standing up by the trees. He had something in his hand, and then I saw two bright flashes. How can you be sure it was Winston Cummings? I'd recognise that abo bastard anywhere. Uh, Tommy goes to school with him. Why didn't you tell us last night when I first interviewed you, Tommy? Oh, I thought what I saw was one of them Roman candle firecrackers. You know, the ones that shoot out coloured balls? It wasn't until I thought about it later that I worked out that that must have been the moment that he shot her. You were in the car listening to the radio while all this was going on, weren't you? Yeah, that's right. Quiz Kids was on. How'd you see Winston from inside the car, Tommy? Here's you. Here's the bonfire. And that's where Winston was standing. Your view is completely obscured by the bonfire. You're wasting our time, Tommy. I was only trying to help. Everyone in town knows he done it. It's alright. Sister. What do you want? Uh, I'm meeting District Nurse O'Brien here. Yeah? We were chatting earlier. I offered to do some free health checks on the children. Did you indeed? Good. Very good. Well, you can hop down now. You ready? One, two, three! Good girl. 
Well, collectively, they lack vitality. They share some other symptoms as well. I'd pay to make a trip to the green grass to pick up some oranges. We lost our fruit trees to the birds. We're doing with that. Yes. Yes, of course. Ah. Oh. Well, hello there. I suppose I'll have to have a look at you too, eh? The baby's already had her health checks done. Last week. Sister Frances, please get the children ready for chapel. That must be you done, Doctor. I think Nurse O'Brien is gathering up the last one or two. This, um... This business with Emma Keneally, it's just... Just terrible, isn't it? Do you have any idea what might have driven Winston to want to kill her? Are you a copper or a doctor? Freedom, Martin Luther King. It's Winston's. Proud young man by the looks. Mm. Consider this a call to arms. Warmest regards, E.K. E.K. May I? Of course. Winston had more than just a crush on Emma. Well, why would you kill someone if you thought you were in love with them? If they were spurned, perhaps. Oh, who was spurned? Oh, nothing, Charlie. Pure conjecture at this point. Are you joining us for lunch? No, I've got a sandwich made up somewhere. On the sink. Jean, is everything okay? Yes, wonderful. I received a call from Christopher Jr. Apparently, I'm going to be a grandmother. Congratulations! No. Oh, Dennis. wonderful news! Thank How you. about that? Bravo! Well, out with the old, in with the new. I'll um, pick up a new letterbox in town, shall I? Lovely. That'll be your one o'clock. Right. Mrs. Goldsmith, why don't you have a seat there? <clears throat> now, what can I do for you? Well, I have this cut and I fear it's become septic. Goodness me. I think you might be right. That does look nasty and there appears to be something lodged in there. Well, you've been at war, haven't you? I'm sorry? That, that is a piece of shrapnel. Now, that's going to need a stitch. I'll have to give you a local. Are you all right with needles? There we are. <laughs> Mrs. Goldsmith, tell me, that explosion, do you recall whether it happened before or after Emma was shot? Um. No, sorry, things were all rather chaotic at that point. Yes, yes, I'm sure. I believe your husband knew the deceased. Yes, Emma was Ian's protege. He taught her at Melbourne University. Oh, well, she followed him up here. <laughs> People tend to gravitate towards Ian. Goodness, you both must be devastated. And your husband knows the young boy, doesn't he, Winston? I'm wondering if your housekeeper would mind calling for a taxi cab. I walked here, but I'm not sure I have the energy. I tell you what. I have to drive into town anyway. Why don't I drop you home? No, I'm happy for a taxi. Please. Honestly, I insist. It's no trouble at all. 
Well, of course Winston's innocent. It's a ludicrous suggestion otherwise. Ian and Emma successfully campaigned to get Winston and Mary into the local public school. We were on the league for Aboriginal advancement together. We went in hard, we won our case. Schools P and C were furious. The thought of their precious children sharing the same seat as coloreds. Yes, I can see how that would uh, earn you some enemies. Well, it was worth it. That boy Winston, he's something special, a smart lad. He'll be the first man of colour to make the bar, you mark my words. Dr Blake has better things to do than listen to your raves, dear. Oh, thank you. And tell me, you don't recall speaking with Emma on the night of the bonfire? No, no, sorry. I was quite preoccupied with my work, I'm afraid. At your work? I am a cultural anthropologist. I was making sound recordings of the evening, part of my study into pagan ritual. Really? Oh, how fascinating. I find it so. It'll be... Published one day soon and lost in a library soon after, no doubt, but that's how I fill my days. Ah, just uh, one more thing, if I may. The explosion. What colour was the flame? Blue. Bluish green. Why? Produced from heat. Heat causes a substance to become hot and glow, initially emitting infrared, and then red, orange, yellow, and white light as it becomes hotter. Are you with me so far? Yeah, I don't think this is a good idea, Doc. Now, luminescence, on the other hand, light produced using energy sources other than heat. Chemicals, Charlie. The hell are you doing? Ah, oh, just in time, gentlemen. What the bloody? Colour, Charlie? Definitely blue towards the end. Caused by the addition of copper chloride, you won't find that in a regular 9mm round. Davis, explain the meaning of this. But it's all right, Charlie. You said the boy reeked of gunpowder. There's a reason for that. But not because he fired a weapon. He'd been playing with firecrackers. Specifically, I think you'll find he was responsible for the homemade bomb that caused the explosion in the bonfire last night. I found this in the ashes of the fire. The fire you raked out, Davis. Bring in the suspect. Hop to it. Sorry, Bill. You want to tell me about this? I've already told you. I didn't kill Emma Keneally. That's not what I'm asking you. We're talking about the jam tin that you packed with gunpowder from the emptied out firecracker. Don't put words in his mouth, Blake. Guy Fawkes night. Good way to draw attention away from the sound of a gun going off. No, I was making a statement. You used it as a distraction, didn't you? Probably thought you were being clever about it. No. no make makes sense. You're a smart kid. Wait till everyone's focused on the explosion, then pop. Hmm? Winston, catch. Here, what about this? You see, no attempt to catch until the very last moment. I better be going somewhere with this. All right. Winston, I am terribly sorry. Just one more test, all right? Can you tell me, in order from your left to your right, who's standing where? Well, you're in the middle, but I can't. No. No. It's all right. It's over. And again, I am so sorry for putting you through that. Have you ever worn spectacles or glasses for your vision? No, uh, never had any. No. But you can read, obviously, so your short-range vision is fine. Superintendent, two shots fired in quick succession. 25 yards, thereabouts. Pinpoint accuracy at night. A moving target. I mean... Look, confirm it with an ophthalmologist if necessary. You can bet your life his lawyer will if you put him on trial. Release him. Now, hang on a tick. 
Before you go, these used to be my father's. Just until you get yourself your own pair. Let's see how they look on, eh? Ah, pretty good, I'd say. You know, that was fairly dangerous, what you did with the jam tin. Packing it full of gunpowder, people could have been killed. Do you know who the Watharong are? It's the name of the tribe from this area. How many do you see around Ballarat today? Smoothing the pillar of a dying race. That's what you lot call it? You know what we call it? Genocide. You should learn some local history, Doctor, before you start lecturing me about people dying. Two double malts, thank you. Afternoon, Doc. Back for more fireworks? Ah, uh, Kevin, no thank you. I think I've had plenty of fireworks for now. It's funny, though. I remember your mum and dad coming in here as a wee kid. Well, it's funny. I, I don't recall ever coming here with my parents. Oh, no. Never said you did. Every Friday night they come in, just like clockwork. Your mum would order a slice of poppy seed cake and Dad would heat it up in the salamander for her. Every Friday, you say? Yep, they'd sit in that table right over there. And he'd always make sure it was available for them. <laughs> right. Great tackle on Winston Cummings. Yeah, well, uh, just doing what needed to be done. Uh, did you see anything else, Kevin, when the, uh, when the shots were fired? No, no, I was... Uh, too busy loading up the bonfire. Look, miss, uh, I know she was a friend of yours and I don't like speaking ill of the dead. But that Emma Keneally, she could be a right... Tough little negotiator. Yeah. She and Goldsmith caused an almighty mess at our school letting those darkies in. It's not fair on anybody. The black kids more so, setting them up to fail like that. Not right. Winston Cummings was a gifted student. Look how that turned out. Well, it's not their fault. Genetics. You're equipped with a much smaller brain. Scientific fact. Correct, Doc? Well, I haven't read that particular paper, Kevin. Anyhow, look, uh, what do we owe you? No, no, uh, no charge, Tommy. <laughs> you know, it's uh, Olivia Goldsmith I feel sorry for. Why is that? Well, uh, Emma and her husband, uh, they worked really closely together, if you know what I mean. minds think alike. Doc, you can't keep doing this. Come on, Charlie, we're all family. Hey, if Munro finds out you're here, he'll have my bloody head. In your own little world, as always. Have a look at this. It's Emma's diary. I.G. such a hypocrite. I.G. Ian Goldsmith? Why is he a hypocrite? I yet to find that out, Charlie. Doc, you should know. Olivia Goldsmith? She's been a member of the local gun club since she was a kid. Her father's the club president. Said she's a hell of a shot. Is that right? Thank you, Charlie. S.J.B.H. Marutna, July 17th. S.J. Sister Josephine. That's what I was thinking. And um, who's B.H.? B. 
Bill Hobart. You let him in here? Now look, Bill, hang on, let me explain. Get out! Bill, tell me, what is your connection to Sister Josephine at the orphanage? Do I have to cuff you, Doc? Come on, what happens at Marie? Matty, I was wondering. Do you think you could chase something up for me? Yeah, of course. The minutes from the last couple of meetings of the League for Aboriginal Advancement. Yeah, I can do that. Wonderful. Jen? Mm hmm The Goldsmiths. How old is their baby? Baby? They don't have any children. Really? Well, I couldn't help but notice a bassinet and some nappies and so forth at their place. She was having trouble falling pregnant. I know she saw your father about it. I see. Well, it certainly doesn't get any easier the older we get. Anyhow, what's for dinner? Well, it was going to be roast lamb and three veg. Now it's just the three veg. Yes, quite. How difficult would it be mm -hmm. to turn that into a pot of soup? A very large pot of soup. Well, hello there. Dr. Blake, thought we'd say a quick hello to Winston and see how he's getting by. Marvellous news about his release? Yes. Yes, it is. Mrs. Goldsmith. How's that arm of yours healing? Oh, fine, thank you. Well, cheerio. Ah, sister. Now, I took you at your word. Where are we with the fingerprint analysis? Uh, still waiting for it to come back, boss. Take a walk with me, Davis. <laughs> You a suspect, sir? Do you have a suspect for me, Davis? No, sir. Or are you waiting for your landlord, Dr. Blake, to provide you one, perhaps? I'm having the sirloin. What about you? My shout. Well, Jane, I'd say your soup is a hit. <laughs> it's very much appreciated. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Now, kids, when you've finished your dinner, we've got something very special lined up for you. Ah, Bart, Bart, you have to finish your dinner first, all right? May I leave the table, sister? Yes, take your dishes to the kitchen sink, thank you. Not you, Mary, you're heading the washing up team. Sister. Um, young Winston, he's left-handed. He's ambidextrous. Nice crockery, sister. Brought them back from China. Ah, you were in China? Uh, a decade back. I was part of a Catholic mission in Shandong. Ah. What's your connection? I have a daughter there. How old? She's 21. She's a long way from home. Something you need to hear, Davis. Your father. I knew him back when I was a young copper in Richmond. You did? We worked the beat together. Took me under his wing while I was still trying to work out which way was up. He was a good man, your dad. Man. Have you been here long? Eight years. I see. And how do you like Ballarat? It's nice. Jupe! 
stupid. Stupid girl. Stupid Aboriginal. It's all right, Mary. It's my fault. It's all right. It is not that nice here. No. They cry every night before they go to sleep. And what about you? I stopped crying a long time ago. Sister, tell me, what does Marubna mean to you? It's the town where the vast percentage of our orphans come from. So all their parents are deceased? Families break down in different ways. Very hard to lose your children. I don't make the rules. The states neglect laws to determine whether I receive children or not. All I do is open my doors. Quiet. Tell me, who transports the little ones? The police. Bill Hobart? Sometimes. <laughs> and the baby, when did she arrive? Last Tuesday. Lucien, would you mind coming with me, please? Of course. Those are my old glasses. I gave them to Winston weeks ago. Lucien. Scared of what? Of us. She's just a girl and she's trapped in this town where nobody seems to like her. No family. It's just dreadful. Yes. Yes, it is. Wish there was something more I could do to help. Well, you certainly helped last night and I thank you. Just a delight to see those young ones tucking into some good healthy food for change. Wasn't it? Seemed like a rather empty gesture to me. You're quite right. 
Let's organise for a delivery once a week to the orphanage. Plenty of fresh fruit and veggies. Perhaps you could sort out the details for me. Ah. I have been in contact with the League for Aboriginal Advancement and they're involved in some very important work if the minutes of their last few meetings are anything to go by. You've read the minutes? Oh, I did better than that. I hope you can read my shorthand. So I just hit records from the reel to reel and this one does exactly the same thing. I mean, it's just, you know, much more compact. I mean, it's so portable. You could take this anywhere, couldn't you? Oh, it's remarkable how small they can get these days. It really is. Oh, Olivia, the doctor's here, talking the latest technology. He's looking at getting a reel to reel of his own. Yes. Do you know, I just had a thought. You were recording the other night at the bonfire, weren't you? I wonder whether you might have picked something up on tape, the shooting perhaps. The tape was ruined, I'm afraid. The flare from the explosion. I see. Just one more thing, if I may. Ian, you're a member of the uh, League for Aboriginal Advancement. Mm -hmm. We both are. We've attended every meet. Really? That's not what's recorded in the minutes. You sent your apologies at last week's meeting. Why did you fail to attend? Well, I see what relevance that has to this. The baby at the orphanage. She was supposed to be delivered to you, wasn't she? You've been waiting for just the right child. A baby that was just white enough. Emma found out she threatened to expose you to the League. That child was deemed under neglect by the state. I had every right. Yes, yes, yes. Emma put the brakes on your plans, didn't she? Is that why you two fought that night at the bonfire? Is that how you got that scratch on your neck? Okay, that's enough. That's quite enough. Do you own a gun, Mr Goldsmith? I only ask because the police already know that your wife's been a member of the local gun club since she was a girl. Get out. And fine, Mrs Goldsmith, you were angry. Furious. Furious enough, perhaps, to shoot Emma. Get out of my house! Ian, be a man for once in your life and get him out of here. Ian, it's all right. I'm leaving. Lovely day. Cheerio. I hope that's a new letterbox. Keep listening. What's that? I don't recognise that sound at all. Shh, wait. Gunshots. No. It was barely audible. Now, wait a minute. Play it again. Now, listen carefully. Roman candle. Mm. Uh, jumping jack. Penny bunger and... There. All three gunshots accounted for. Well, where was the explosion? It doesn't come for another seven or eight seconds. We've all been assuming that the jam tin bomb was used to uh, disguise the sound of the gunshot. This proves uh, they're separate events entirely. The 
penny whistle. At the bonfire, the penny whistler, he scared little Gracie. Then Mary left. She'd seen Emma and Winston together. Where was she when the shots rang out? I don't know. She... She was by my side when the explosion happened, but... By then, Emma was already dead. We need to talk to Mary. Charlie, what's going on? Winston lied to us about having glasses. The nun confirmed they're his. She's the one gave them to him. What are you doing with him? He's being charged with the shooting of Emma Keneally. Oh, come on. What possible motivation would he have for killing Emma? Well, Davis found a love letter, too. Seems the kid was love-struck and she didn't want a bar of him. It's lucky we found him before he went bloody walkabout. Let's go. Sister. We need to have a, a quick word with young Mary, if we may. And that will be difficult. Mary's gone. Her bed hasn't been slept in and my bike is missing. Where would she go? She has brothers in Marupa. Right. Thank you, sister. Come on. When I look at you sometimes, you make the sun shine. Very sweet. You're always so smart. The prettiest girl I know, spelt P-R-E-T-T-Y-E-S-T. -E -E I didn't write that letter. And those weren't your glasses either. What are we meant to think, Winston? Hmm? You're not saying much. So you can twist my words and use them against me. And you wanted to go to university. The irony. You know what Wendery translates as in our language? When the white settlers first came across the lake, the local Aboriginal people told them, Wendery, Wendery. The white fellas must have thought it was the name of the place, when really, they were wanting them to go away, go away. That's irony. Wendery. Nast! Stop it! Wendery! Wendery. That's her bicycle? I think so, yes. There she is. Mary. Oh, goodness, she's cold. Suffering from hypothermia, we'll need to get to a hospital, Matty. Help me get her up, would you? That's the way. That's the way. No, that's unusual. What? Look, this mark here, that... That's a bullet graze. Lucien, Mary wasn't running to someone. She was running away from someone. Oh, I can't believe she'd come out here without a coat on such a bitterly cold night. Because she'd given her coat to Emma. What? Emma came underdressed on the night of the bonfire. Mary must have lent her coat to Emma. Emma was wearing it when she was shot. Oh. Of course. Police. Charlie, it's me. Listen, he didn't do it. 
We've had it wrong all along. Emma wasn't the intended target. Mary was. Doc, I... I need you to bring me the murder weapon and the love letter, the one you took from my desk. Gee, you don't ask for much, do you? Thank you, Charlie. Oh, we just swear to close. Oh, damn. I was afraid we'd left our run too late. <laughs> What'd you like? You're a good man, Kevin. Just my usual double malted. And one for Sergeant Dave. Uh, Tommy, uh, Andy. Good boys. Mr. Van der Heiden, do you own a handgun? Oh, it's in my safe. We'd have to go through to the back. Great. All right. Just keep out of boys. Just mind you, step there. Yeah, uh, all above board. What do you use it for? Well, me and the boys are in the uh, local gun club. Yeah, we're aware of that. Actually, it isn't the 45 we're interested in, Kevin. It's the Luger your father brought back from the war. Oh, um, yep, yeah, that's in here somewhere. It's, uh, oh. Is this it? Yes, it's... Uh... That was the gun used to kill Emma Keneally. Someone must have uh, broken in the shop and stole it. I mean, how did they get access to the safe key? Oh, I'm sure they. Can we do this down the station? Dad? It's Tony, just go look after your little brother. I did it. I shot her. Someone had to stop her, otherwise, the blacks would be running this town if Emma can nearly head away. Dad! Stay out of it, Tommy. I suppose you wrote this love letter too, did you? To young Mary Jackson? No, no, of course you didn't. That's not your handwriting. You see, Mary was the killer's intended target, not Emma. It was a case of mistaken identity. Wasn't it, Tommy? Mary rejected your advances because she's in love with Winston. In a moment, Sergeant Davis will check the handwriting of this letter against the handwriting in your school books. I'm sure he'll find a match, just as I'm sure he'll find a match between your fingerprints on those milkshake glasses and the spent shells we found at the murder scene and the grip of your grandfather's pistol. I never meant to shoot Miss Keneally. I only meant to knock the darky off. Why, Tommy, why? I paid her all that attention at school. I was so nice to her. She still preferred that abo bastard to me. Come here. Bit early for the post, isn't it? <laughs> Just a tad. Well, thank you for sorting out the letterbox, by the way. Perfectly fine. This one's much nicer anyway. Yes, very smart. You know, Jean, those children at the orphanage, that place, seeing them I see my daughter alone, barely able to speak the language. Her mother dead, her father gone, half white, half Chinese. Her life, her life must have been unbearable. Well, you can't blame yourself. Winston, Mary, all the little ones at the orphanage. They've already gone through so much. Children, children just want to be with their parents. Come in, 
inside or make us a cup of tea. That'd be lovely. I'll be in shortly. the anniversary of the rebellion at the Eureka Stockade. The day miners fought. Get out of the CPA already! What are you doing wandering around the memorial that night, eh? Stop pretending you're a policeman and get me an autopsy report pronto. Cool. I thought you were lost. You keep files on people? You're so bloody naive, girl. I've never been disappointed in you. Not for a moment.